In this video, we are going to review how to save and share both articles and searches in PubMed. In order to use some of these strategies, you will need to create a PubMed account. To create an account through PACE, go to the library homepage at library.pace.edu, click on the databases tab, and then click on P. This will take you to the A to Z databases list and the P section, and we can click on PubMed. You will be asked to log in with your PACE credentials, and you may have to do a duo mobile two-factor authentication code as well. On the PubMed homepage, you should see your PACE email address in the top right. If you've never accessed PubMed through the PACE library, that's okay. An account will be created for you through this login process. And then each time afterwards that you log in, it should take you directly to your account. And if you have any issues with creating this account, uh, please contact the library for assistance or watch our video on creating PubMed accounts, which will be linked in the description to this video. Let's say I've done a search for back pain and yoga. This search returns 375 results, and I'd like to save and share these. This can be helpful if a professor or mentor would like to review my search strategy or article results, or perhaps I'm working on a team project and I need to share the articles with team members. Or maybe I just want to find ways to stay really organized in my own research process. One of the first options I have is to save my search results. When I click on save underneath the search box, I have a choice of which articles I would like to save. I can save all the results on this page, which is about 10 results, all 375 results, or a selection of articles, which would be ones that I would check off with the boxes next to the titles. Then I can select which format. So this can be a summary text file. The PubMed, PMID, and Abstract are all text files or a CSV. So we can take a look at what these actually look like. If I create the summary text file, it will download up in my browser and I can open this document. You can see that it's very basic. It's just in the authors and the citation information and the title of the articles and they're numbered. So it's a great rundown of what was in my results, but very basic information. I can also select the PubMed option, also a text file, but it includes a lot of the background metadata, which is probably way more information than what we need about each individual article. And again, it's also a text file. And sometimes this document is not very easy to manipulate. I can also select the PMID option. And this one is really just going to be all of the PubMed IDs for the individual articles in my results. So not a lot of helpful information. The abstract file, again, also a text file. And probably maybe the second most helpful behind the next one we're gonna look at, the CSV. Um, but this one will include most of the helpful information that you could use about an article. So the title, the authors, uh, the abstract, the DOI information. So they're not very large descriptions, but just enough information to be helpful. And lastly is the CSV option, which I recommend as the most easy to use version. It will open in Microsoft Excel and you can select all of the rows and columns and then click wrap text and then update the size of the rows and columns uh, just to make it a little bit easier to read. The only really interesting information that's missing is the abstract, but otherwise it does include a lot of relevant information about the results and the DOI to get back to the article um, as well as the PubMed ID. And if you need to share articles with a professor or team members, saving to a file like this can be a good option because it can be attached to an email or uploaded to share on a site like OneDrive or Google Docs. Another way to save and share articles is to use the email button. So I can enter 
uh, my email or a colleague's email in the to field. And then in the same way we did under save, you can select either all the results on this page, all results, or a selection that I have done by uh, checking off articles. And then again, I can uh, see what format I'd like it to be in. So a summary or a summary uh, text file will be shorter than including the entire abstract. So the summary will include the citation information, the abstract will include the author title and abstract information. Keep in mind that uh, selecting the abstract option will have more information that needs to be emailed, so it may increase the number of emails that you get, uh, as well as how many search results you have. More than maybe a hundred search results, you're going to get a lot, a lot of emails um, to try to provide all the information that you're requesting. So uh, this option of emailing is sometimes the best if you have uh, maybe say less than 200 search results. By clicking the send to button, you can save articles and searches to your PubMed account, to your dashboard. The first option is clipboard, and that's not really a recommended option as it will really only be saved to your browser cookies, and that will expire after about eight hours of inactivity. So if I select the first three articles and then click send to clipboard, you can see that they're clipped here under the search bar, but it's pretty easy to forget that they're there um, and then they expire. A better option is to use the collections option. So again, I can select how many I would like to save, whether that be all results on this first page, all results total, all 375, or just the ones that I have selected. And I can create a new collection and give it a name. This is great for you know, saving articles for multiple projects, different topics, different courses, um, or if you already have an existing collection, for example, I already have one on back pain and yoga, I can add it to the, that collection. And then to view the collection, click on your email in the top right, and click on dashboard. You can see my collections here on the right side. And I can click on the name of the collection to access uh, the articles that I've been saving in that collection. Uh, you can also click edit to remove. I can check the boxes next to ones that maybe were duplicates or ones that I no longer need and delete those. And I can also save the collection to a text file or a CSV. PubMed also allows you to make as many collections as you'd like. And as we saw before, you can continue to add articles to, to collections as you complete more searches. And one way to share your collection is to set this sharing to public. So this one I have set to public and I have a direct URL that I can share with others. And it's only gonna link to the articles that you have saved, not to the original search, just to your collection. Another option under send to is my bibliography. Um, this operates like a collection, but it's intended for authors to save their published citations so they can create a CV or resume of their work. So collections is the best option for someone who's just doing research. Lastly, under the send to button, you can send articles to a citation manager such as EndNote or Zotero. So you can select how many articles you are sending, whether it's all the results on this page, which is about 10 results, all results total, or the ones that I have selected. And then I can click Create File. And it downloads up to my downloads bar. I can click here to open the folder. And it will open directly into EndNote and import the citations, however many I have selected. One good tip to note as well is the display options on the right side. So as you're deciding what articles to save, you can also change the per page number up to 200. So let's say you wanna save just the first 200 that are maybe the most recent. You could change the display options and then change the sort by to most recent. And then that would just give you the most recent information or most recent articles. 
the last strategy is to be able to save your search in your dashboard by clicking create alert underneath the search bar. You can name the search however you'd like. PubMed will default to using your search terms and the search terms box will display your exact search string. So if you have a very large complex search string, this is a good way to keep that search accessible. You can select to receive email updates of new search results that are acquired from PubMed that would appear in this search. Um, this is very valuable if you're trying to keep up to date on your topic. If you just wanna save the search, you can select no and then click save. It will now appear up in your dashboard uh, under saved searches. And you can click on the name of the search to rerun it. Um, keep in mind that as articles are added to PubMed, um, the quantity of your results will change. You can see that these older results that I ran previously have added um, 10 results two months ago for this one. Um, these result, these articles I have been added since last year when I started running um, these searches. So there's been a lot of articles added for these topics. You can also click on the gear button or the edit button to see the actual search string if you need to update it or copy and paste it to share with others. So that is a basic rundown of the strategies for saving and sharing both individual articles and full search results on PubMed. If you have any questions or need help with PubMed, you can visit the library website at library.pace.edu. You can chat with a librarian by clicking the chat live button on the bottom right, or visit our help menu to uh, see our phone number, schedule a research appointment, or see our video tutorials.